is an important story. We're back on this Saturday morning with more on the flu. The virus is more widespread this year than it was this time last year, affecting all of the continental U.S. and Alaska. And health experts are still warning that the worst may be yet to come. So far this year, 37 kids have died from the flu. That's compared to just eight last year. NBC News uh, medical contributor Dr. Natalie Azar here with some important information on how to keep everyone safe. Uh, not just eight. Eight's a lot of kids to die. 37, though, this year. Mm -hmm. And we continue to see these stories about children dying within hours. Mm. How can that be? Right. So, well, first of all, let's think about the traditional risk factors for being more vulnerable to the flu are if you're very young, less than five years old, if you're over 65 years old, so the very young, the very old, if you're pregnant, if you have an underlying illness, a chronic condition, if your immune system's not, not working so well. But yes, we've heard, frighteningly, some stories of seemingly healthy people succumbing within a few hours to the flu. How does this happen? The theory is that basically your immune system fighting the flu becomes so exorbitant that it can actually end in shock and organ failure and even death within a few hours of getting sick. I do have to say that that's certainly not the common sure. um, you know, thing that you would expect or an outcome from the flu. The majority of people can handle it at home and do quite well, yeah. but we're hearing these stories of healthy people, you know, succumbing quickly, and, and that's an explanation for why that can happen. So because of that, parents are paranoid, yes. I will say. So I tweeted about it. My twins, my five-year-olds, yes. are sick right now, right? right? So my daughter had a fever. Her best friend had, had a fever the night before. Mm -hmm. She, Her mom took her to the emergency room. It was packed. Yeah. I took my daughter to the pediatrician's office. He said he's never seen anything like it because we don't know whether it's a cold or flu. Right. It's hard to know the difference. Right. I mean, and certainly, I, you know, the way I describe it is the flu is a cold on steroids. Like everything mm. is much worse. The fever is higher. You know, you're you're feeling achier and everything like that. But warning signs for parents when you should take your child in to get medical attention. If they're having labored breathing or they, if you feel like they're, they're in distress, mm -hmm. any bluish color around the lips, certainly. If they're not feeding or drinking or able to keep down liquids, if they're lethargic and not easy, easy awakened. And one thing, pneumonia is listed on the graphic. How do you know if your child has pneumonia? It's not so easy, right? Yeah. This is a huge pearl. <clears throat> for adults as well as kids. But the, the story goes like this. You get sick with the flu. You're sick for a couple of days. You start to feel better after about five, six, seven days. That's the natural course of influenza. Yeah. And then suddenly you get really sick again. Mm. That usually indicates that you have now become infected, a super infection, with pneumonia, which is mm. typically bacterial. That's typically what will cause certainly older people to be hospitalized um, you know, and die from the flu. So again, your child is sick with the flu, yeah. they start to get better, they get worse again, please bring them in and get tested for pneumonia. So we've been talking about kids. Let's turn to adults yeah. now because we've been seeing a lot of stories about baby boomers mm. being especially yes. susceptible yes. as well to the flu. If you're an adult, how should you determine when it's time to go to the hospital? Okay, so again, a, a few, some similarities apply here. Respiratory distress, significant difficulty breathing, um, chest pain because heart attack is increased in the, in the first few weeks after the flu, um, confusion, dizziness, <clears throat> intractable vomiting. Those are all symptoms or signals that you should seek medical attention. And the same thing applies again if you think you've gotten better and gotten worse again. Dr. Natalie Azar. Good information. Very useful information yeah. this morning. Thank Thank you so much. For Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.